or coaching, depending on their particular needs. But this cycle of the ISPT meeting, PD being determined and delivered, and progress monitoring is still in place. One of our alignment tools has been the District 2020 Plan. The Denver 2020 Plan has been a foundational tool utilized by the ISPT to guide discussion about best practices and about ways in which we can maximize the support offered by the Early College Expansion Grant to impact Denver students. As you can see on this slide, the three key outcomes from the Denver 2020 Plan are that students will learn in a joyful, rigorous, and personalized environment while learning with 21st century skills and supports in order to achieve standards mastery. The personalization component of the Denver 2020 plan is especially evident in the College and Career Readiness Keys for Success tool, which guides student ownership of behaviors around the critical domains of ownership of learning, academic mindset, thinking critically, and communication and collaboration. Furthermore, the instructional support personnel team aligns a number of district, national, and school-based initiatives around pedagogical best practices for all learners. Something to note about bringing all the school-based instructional supports together is the importance of utilizing a protocol or system for encouraging and facilitating equal sharing of information and voices at the ISPT table. Likewise, the ISPT focuses their conversation around the SIS strategies as part of our common language for professional development topics, lesson planning categories, and instructional workshops. The Instructional Support Personnel Team is really designed to bring all of these initiatives together into one cohesive instructional message at the building level bringing together the district and school-based initiatives to meet the needs of our students. This alignment has been critical to the success of our schools. We're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of the ISPT over the last three years of the Early College Grant. During the first year, the ISPT was the priority was on getting the right people to the table. Many of our buildings were having multiple meetings with many different conversations about instruction. This leads to a disjointed message and can result in conflicting priorities. Once the key instructional leaders in a building were identified, the alignment process could begin. Teams work to identify all instructional initiatives and use data to identify priorities for the instructional focus. A cohesive instructional message can now be delivered to the school staff. This was the beginning stage of implementation for the teaching and learning cycle. During year two, of the ISPT started with a refinement of the first year's process. The teams assessed if the key personnel were missing from the table, and in many schools, this also meant adding in-building teacher leader coaches called differentiated roles. Having this teacher voice at the table was key in addressing the needs of the students. This also meant a new layer of responsibility was added to the ISPT, as many of our buildings used this ISPT meeting time to provide development to the team on aspects of the observation and feedback process. For example, watching videos of coaching sessions and calibrating on feedback, or even opportunities for meta-coaching. We also worked to establish a more formal process for the progress monitoring, and in some places conducted walkthroughs with the school team. This year, we really saw the ISPTs in our buildings take shape and really follow the learning cycle of the meeting to discuss instructional Priorities provide differentiated needs-based professional development and then progress monitor for both teacher implementation and student achievement of the desired outcomes from PD. The Early College team has also formalized our process. The Early College team has also formalized our process for progress monitoring and conducts team walkthroughs collecting data and providing reports to our ISPTs along with PD recommendations at least three times a year. While it's safe to say that the ISPT functions differently at each school, it is also important to note that every grant school has an ISPT that includes key instructional members, having conversations, and shaping the instructional work in each building. As we think about how we're moving forward into the last years of the grant, we really see the early college instructional coaches' role as building capacity and helping our teams identify a plan for sustainability. Excitingly, the district has also recognized the importance of an instructional leadership team at each building, 
and is also providing district systems and structures for these teams as well. Let's take a moment to pause and think about what questions do you have about the alignment and development of the ISPT. If you could direct those questions to Alexandra Sabo, we will be happy to answer any questions you might have. Looks like no questions are coming in at this time. Definitely type them into Alexandra anytime a question comes up while we're doing this webinar today. We're going to take a look at the components of our instructional support personnel team. On this slide, you can see some examples of both district and school-based personnel who might be included on an instructional support personnel team. Our district has many district-level partners who provide support for our schools, from school improvement partners to data assessment partners to teacher effectiveness coaches, as well as the others listed here. Schools may choose to include these partners on the ISPT team if they wish. Most schools do choose to include the teacher effectiveness coaches and, of course, the early college instructional coach. Schools also choose among a variety of school-based personnel to include on their instructional support personnel team. Examples of school-based personnel are listed here on the slide. Schools must have an administrator on the ISPT who is able to drive decision-making and implement decisions of the ISPT. When our ISPTs gather together to meet, we, we review instructional and student data, discuss and plan for professional development and coaching sessions, and engage in conversations about college and career readiness. The instructional support personnel teams gather on a predetermined schedule that differs for every school. School ISPTs may meet weekly, bi-monthly or monthly, and this meeting schedule is determined by the school itself based on its needs. ISPTs also discuss ongoing alignments of initiatives, reinforce the instructional message being delivered to staff, and discuss coaching assignments. Outcomes of ISPT meetings vary by school site. Sample outcomes are listed on the slide. They generally center around professional development, coaching, and progress monitoring for implementation. An additional important outcome is the continued alignment of initiatives and reinforcing the common language of a building so that a unified instructional message is consistently delivered to our teachers. If you have any questions here about the components of an ISPT, team members or outcomes of our meetings, again, please type those, direct, those questions into the chat box and direct them to Alexandra. And we have a question here that came in from our first section. Is there anyone that we wished we would have engaged in the ISPT but hadn't? If I think about that, I think about how we mentioned that our schools have school improvement partners, data assessment partners, literacy partners, math partners, um, and that we would have, I think, in hindsight, reached out to them more assertively at the beginning uh, and gotten them on the teams. When we first started, a lot of the teams have evolved to include some of those school support partners, but we could have uh, engaged them from the beginning of the process. And I think one thing we've also realized is really important is making sure that there's a decision maker at those meetings. Um, we would have some meetings a lot of times with people wanting to plan professional development or next steps and then have to have a separate meeting with a decision maker like an administrator or um, an assistant principal who could make that decision and help us um, calendar those days. So that became a really important person to include. Additionally, I think um, from the beginning, uh, we had done some work reaching out to the directors of the teacher leadership and the differentiated roles, the DR teachers, 
um, who support professional development within the school buildings. And um, we had done some work to engage them at the beginning of the grant, and as those roles have changed over the course of the last three years, um, some of the progress that we had made on engaging with that personnel has shifted or changed. And so had we had more structure in the beginning, reaching out to those folks that could have impacted us down the road. Definitely keep those questions coming. Type them in at any time and we'll get answer them at our next pause. Hey, thank you so much. In this next section, we're going to explore three schools that are specific examples of high-functioning ISPTs. For our first school, we're going to look at Hamilton Middle School. Hamilton Middle School is one of our early college middle schools with a direct theater pattern into a high school, Thomas Jefferson High School. TJ hosts the Center for Communication Technology Magnet, as well as a number of concurrent enrollment courses. In order to prepare students for the rigor of this school and other high school environments, the Hamilton ISPT meets frequently to address teacher support, rigorous lesson planning, school-based college and career ready activities, linked college nights with their high school neighbors, and data-driven instruction. Hamilton's instructional support personnel team gathers about once a week. Additionally, depending on the week, we may have other attendees visiting from Denver Central Office, such as supports from the Literacy Design Collaborative Department. What you can see here on this slide is a snapshot of Hamilton's ISPT meeting agenda. As a team, we identify our goals prior to the meeting and determine the roles we'll fill as participants of the meeting. The goals of this meeting were to discuss findings from classroom walkthroughs from both the evaluative LEAP observations as well as the non-evaluative early college observations in order to norm our conversations about next steps. Additionally, we utilized information from the lesson planner, which is the blue box on the right side, to drive planning for the upcoming whole school professional development, which would be focused on differentiation through scaffolding, questioning, and collaborative group work. Our second example comes from North High School, and in this video you will see how a Denver Elementary School and the Early College Grant participant North High School are leveraging a distributive leadership model for the ISPT to drive instructional work. You will also hear the principal, Scott Wolf, describe how he has empowered his instructional leadership team to drive the school-wide vision for college and career readiness for all. Let's do it. It's powerful. Leadership development in them, I think, is something that's really special. Teacher leadership and collaboration is redefining what a leadership model can look like in Denver Public Schools. It redistributes observations with senior team leads, master teachers who provide feedback and coaching throughout the school year. Everyone, giving principals like Dr. Amy Guile at High Tech Elementary School more support. There's no way as a principal I can know the content from kindergarten to fifth grade at that deep level to give people really valuable feedback. Without the teacher leaders and their expertise, I think I would have a group of teachers getting very surface level feedback. But to me, like that's the smallest piece. The biggest piece is time to focus on the bigger picture, connecting personally with families. I know I have more time for that principal touch. They can call me and I can actually see them within a day. I can return their phone calls and emails in a timely manner because I'm not overwhelmed. Are we going to introduce them to Yes. That teamwork carries into meetings like this one, where principals have space to both coach senior team leads and strengthen their school's culture. Every move that we make has such a strong teacher perspective because teachers are always part of the decision making. But I think it's been able to help us make the best moves for our teachers on a regular basis. Across town at Denver North High School, every year we get more refined on like what it actually should look like. Principal Scott Wolf has dedicated time to work alongside senior team leads on their coaching and leadership skills. Teacher leadership and collaboration allows me as a leader to work with my entire staff in a different way that I think is a better way. What they wanted to work on, why they wanted to work on it. Now, 
because senior team leads still have half the day to do what they love most, okay. teach. Feedback and strategies from these meetings influence the entire school, from the principal to senior team lead, from senior team lead to teachers, and most importantly, from teachers to students. The kids recognize that learning is something that never stops. And it's not just that there's a teacher in them in the classroom, but that teacher is learning and they are learning. It's better for kids. It's also an opportunity for principals to focus on larger efforts impacting all students. I can empower my teacher leaders to do the work that I used to not be able to get through. That means I have to be stronger in casting a school-wide vision, school-wide priority, and provide the support to get there so that Every one of my teams can really be bought into that. Teacher leadership and collaboration is about building stronger teams and distributing leadership so that principals and teachers can work together to support each other. But most importantly, it ensures students in every classroom continue to learn, grow, and succeed. I think I learned as much from them as they helped they learn from me. I think what this does is it helps to create more of this feel like you're a part of something and you're being supported towards that. So I think it's that powerful. So just to Add to that thought, North's model for the ISPT really does focus around the distributive leadership, and you could see North's principal, Scott Wolf, recognizing the importance of having a unified team to drive this message for instructional change at North. Some of the team members that you saw in that video would be the principal, assistant principals, social worker, differentiated roles, teacher leader coaches, and also the early college instructional coach. This team meets weekly to collaboratively evaluate our progress of North's coaching, teaching, student learning, and professional development. We also provide professional development in this time to the teacher leaders to calibrate for rigor, refine the feedback we are providing teachers, time for meta-coaching, and also looking at data to assess progress. The early college instructional coach meets weekly with the principal to co-plan and debrief these meetings and support facilitation also. Our third example of a high-functioning ISPT is Thomas Jefferson High School. Thomas Jefferson High School's ISPT meets on a monthly basis for this 2015-16 school year. This is year three of our early college expansion project. And during years one and two, the TJ ISPT met twice a month. The ISPT at TJ focused heavily on the professional development within the teaching and learning cycle. As an AVID and early college expansion project school, the TJ Instructional Support Personnel Team focuses on the alignment and messaging of the AVID strategies and the SIF. All professional development sessions are both AVID and early college. After professional development sessions, teachers are observed for implementation of the content of the PD. The ISPT examines the data from these observations and uses that information to inform choices about upcoming PD sessions. The ISPT also discusses which teachers might benefit from coaching based on the PD contact and walkthroughs, PD content and walkthroughs, and assigns coaches during the meetings. Coaching is reassessed the following month for continued support if necessary and or to identify additional teachers who might receive coaching. On the slide here, you can see the members of the TJ ISPT, the types of professional development, and the progress monitoring that happens, and how we do that in that continuous teaching learning cycle. That was three examples of our high-functioning ISPTs here at the Denver Public Schools. Uh, if you have any questions about our ISPTs, please again type them into your chat box and direct them to Alexandra. So in this section, we will highlight successes to celebrate and some of our challenges that you can consider as you work with your own team. Perhaps our biggest success in the formation of the ISPTs is that these teams are taking a life of their own in each of the early college expansion project schools. 
This reflects the different personalities and priorities of our building. We're seeing our teams implementing the teaching learning cycle, the progress monitors, professional development, and coaching. We're really continuing to work on, on alignment of all in-building initiatives to deliver a unified instructional message to teachers. Schools are taking ownership of the instructional support personnel teams and adding key personnel to this expanding their reach of the ISPT. We've also seen schools realizing the importance of setting aside time for the ISPT meeting and have worked to keep the time focus and the scheduling of these meetings as a high priority. As with any new initiative, the successes also come with the challenges, and there have been some challenges of implementing the instructional support personnel team. Among these challenges have been shifts in instructional personnel, which necessitates training and support of new team members, as well as continued realignment to changing district and building initiatives. Furthermore, although we are lucky to have so many supports in our buildings, Sometimes teachers hear multiple points of feedback from multiple personnel, and it can be difficult to make sure teachers are receiving consistent messaging and language around college and career readiness. And as we think forward to the rest of this school year and next school year, there are several items we're taking into consideration among our next steps. Beginning with the 2016-2017 school year, there is a new district level requirement for schools to have an instructional leadership team. This team will have many of the same functions as the ISPT. District rubrics and personnel are being provided to support these teams. We work with our schools to incorporate this new instructional leadership team with existing ISPTs. We are also, of course, aware of the need for sustainability of the instructional support personnel team, so the alignment work will continue once the early college expansion project has ended. As a team, we're working on sustainability and vision plans that incorporate the ISPT as an integral part of each school's plan to sustain the work of the early college expansion project. We're going to pause here for any other questions, and we did have a question come in during this session uh, about what is meta-coaching. So, in the context that, especially at North High School, we use meta-coaching to really ensure the quality of the coaching that teachers are receiving. So, meta-coaching would be an opportunity for coaches to get feedback on their own coaching. For example, we might ask a coach to videotape a debrief conversation with a teacher after they've done an observation. We would watch that video together as an ISPT and then provide feedback to that coach and tips for refining her own, his or her own um, coaching progress. And definitely let us know if that answers the meta coaching question. We have another question coming in about high school teacher reactions to the work of the instructional support personnel team. Do teachers feel supported, and how are teachers dealing with the changes? I think it's been really transformational for some teachers to have their peers move from that role of being just a, a colleague across the hallway to somebody who's in a leadership and a mentoring role now, a coaching role for them. They're finding this relationship is transforming them because they're seeing somebody who can take their learning from the classroom and move to the next level of leadership with it. They're also finding a lot of common ground in the collaboration and the community of having teachers teach other teachers and coach other teachers and building strong relationships because they share the same students. Also, when I think about if teachers feel supported, I think about our different schools and I think about the effectiveness of their ISPT. So, so schools that are very effective, like the ones that we highlighted here today, and if I think about Thomas Jefferson, has done a lot of intentional work around aligning the school initiatives to that one instructional message. That helps the teachers feel supported, they understand how things are connected, and that these best practices run through all the initiatives at their building. And I think that is important, and at the schools where our ISPTs have not developed that consistent specificity of message, that's something we continue to work on, 
with those teams? How do we streamline and put out one unified message so that we can support our teachers appropriately? Another benefit of this tight alignment is also um, supporting our teachers in the sense that they don't feel like they're adding one more thing to the plate. When things are really clearly aligned and schools are delivering a unified um, instructional message, they do see the connections and we all feel like we're moving together towards the same goal. And definitely let us know if that answered that question or if you have more parts of that question for us. And we have a new question coming in around uh, do we see any future needs for incorporating the involvement of staff from our partner colleges? Hello, everybody. This is Lon Mass, and I'm the director of Early College for DPS. And um, this is um, my team or our team of instructional coaches. One of the things that we've done in regards to that alignment, not only within the school through the ISPTs, but what we also do is we work very closely with our college partners in regards to, um, as it relates to department chairs and deans. We, um, this year, we implemented something new in partnership with our college colleges, and that is hosting and um, co-planning and co-facilitating um, adjunct PDs, professional development, with our college partners. You know, something that's so amazing is when you see all that work come to fruition. So last week I was at an ISPT meeting at one of our schools, and one of our concurrent enrollment teachers who goes to those PDs that our Denver coaching team does at our community college partner pulled out the things that we had provided at that community college professional development and presented them to the rest of her ISPT. Um, that was so exciting for me just to see how she had taken things that we had given her in January, implemented them in her classroom, found they were successful, and then brought them to her school team so that they could be spread throughout her school. So I think it is something as we continue thinking about next steps about how to involve our college partners and our concurrent enrollment teachers on these teams. Please let us know if that answered your question. And if there are any other questions, continue to type them in. All right. Definitely, if there are any other questions, send them our way in the next minute or so. As we wrap up this webinar today, the following items are available as resources from this webinar on the community of practice. The Teaching and Learning Cycle Document, the Year 1, Year 2, Year 3 Early College Expansion Project Document, and these webinar presentation slides. Thank you so much for attending our webinar today on the topic of alignment and the ISPT. We'll take another minute or two here just to pause quickly in case there are any lingering questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining our Denver webinar today. Thank you. Thank you. And we, yeah, and we want to thank you also. And again, everyone, those documents will be listed on our community of practice. And we hope you take advantage of it and recruit other people to take advantage of it because there are really rich resources. As always, Denver, you guys did a really great job, your dream team. And we want to thank you. And thank everyone for attending. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.